All right. Good afternoon, Who That Nation. Welcome to the WDN Chat Line Podcast. This is the host, CB, and I'm here with Miss Pretty Carly. Carly, how you doing, doing tonight? so good. Hey. I'm so excited about this. Yes, ma'am. And Who That Nation, we have a special guest with us today. We have former Saints cornerback and currently CFL player, Delvin Bro. Delvin Bro, man, it's an honor to have you on. How you doing, fam? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you having me. Man, I'm, I'm excited because I'm from New Orleans, too, and I have brothers that was playing football at Lawless at the time you was playing high school football as well. So when I told them that, that we was going to be doing this interview with you, my brothers were so excited because they knew about you because they was playing high school football the same time you was playing high school football. But, you know, we was downtown. We was in the lower ninth world. We was at Lawless. And so they was excited. So I'm happy about this. My whole family going to be watching. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Who That Nation, how the show going to go today? We just um, we want to chop it up with, with Delvin, um, you know, get some thoughts on this ups and downs going through a sports career. Um, you know, thoughts on, you know, the Saints season, you know, him being a Saints fan as well. And um, also his new book, he just released a new book. You know, he'll get into that, you know, during the show. But please go cop the book. It's called Unbroken. And we'll let him get into that later on in the show. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, We're going to get started back in your high school career. Um, You at McDougal, 35 high school. Um, Tell us some name of current NFL players that you played with, um, how was the experience playing, you know, at that high school? What star recruit were you at the time? Mm-hmm. Just give us your experience playing at that high school. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, man. I was at uh, McDonough 35 when I graduated in uh, 2007. Um, you know, I, I, I'm humble, man. I'm very humble. I don't really like talking too much about myself, but, uh, my, uh, I was a three-star recruit. It should have been a five-star. I should have been a five-star. In my eyes and in my heart, I was a five-star recruit. I played like a five-star recruit. Um, but now I was a three-star recruit. Um, and I want to say some guys, Talman Gartner. Uh, I want to say Chris Clark. We had Neil Smith. Um, and we had myself, you know, and all guys um, that I know for sure that played in the NFL. Um, and Michael Smith, uh, he was an uh, ESPN reporter. Um, I think he's doing his own show with Jamel Hill, or I don't know if that's still going or not. Um, and, oh, yeah, we have a whole bunch of entrepreneurs. Okay, okay so that's what's up. Yeah, when you – when you fractured your C4, C5, and your C6 vertebrae, how long did that take you to recover, to fully recover from some a gruesome injury like that? Uh, well, you, you know what? To be honest with you, I, I, I don't even have an actual timetable. Um, my doctor didn't really do any rehab um, workouts once I uh, got out of the hospital. Um, but my dad, you know, on the other hand, you know, we started lifting one pound dumbbells. I want to say, like, immediately soon as I got released from the hospital. Um, so I didn't really have a rehab process, but I, I want to say two years, three years, maybe, that my neck was solid and fully, fully healed. My, you know what's crazy is my, um, my doctor who actually fixed my neck, I want to say in 2009, he called me and, you know, was surprisingly shocked that I wasn't playing yet, you know, at LSU. So I was like, wow, you know, if if you're thinking I should be playing, why LSU not let me play? So it's crazy. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because that was my next question for you. I was going to say, you know, you committed to LSU and they honored their scholarship to you, but they, they didn't clear you to play. So how does it feel to know that you couldn't be potentially a part of DBU and mm-hmm. and how did you eventually go from not playing college football to the NFL? Um, you know what, it, it sucked, you know, um, you know, knowing that, you know, Les Miles was giving me, you know, the opportunity to still come on you know, scholarship, right? Like that, that was the cool part. It sucked knowing that I couldn't play. 
You know, I didn't play not one single down. I couldn't practice. Like it was at some point, you know, they didn't even want me around the um, uh, around the facility just because of the liability. So say, say if anything happened to, to, you know, to my neck, leg, anything, you know, then they would be um, charged with anything. So they didn't really want me lifting weights. So that kind of sucked. But uh, living in that, you know, living in that college life, you know, it was it was pretty cool. You know, I loved it. Um, I, I didn't get my degree or anything like that just because I, I, I took it for granted. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I I really was so depressed that you know when the doctors didn't clear me, I, I fell into this you know depression, real real, real bad depression. And uh, you know I, whatever happened, and then my ex wife came into play and she helped me get over that funk. And um, you know that's when I got out of that funk and I started back playing flag football and. Started, I uh, finally got cleared in 2012, and, um, uh, and then I started playing with the Gridiron Developmental Football League, and then went from there. Okay, so um, you 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 in the developmental league? Um, what what is your mindset before you get started with that? Because you know you 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 went from possibly playing on national TV, um, you know, at LSU. Now you got to start, you know, from the mud. You know, you took you. And it wasn't your fault because, you know, you, you got hurt. But um, you start from the developmental league and you know you're going to have to work your way to get to your ultimate goal. So how, how was that process mentally? Uh, you know what? It, it, it was it was tough. I'm not even going to sit up and shake it, Coach, y'all, man, because, uh, you know, it, it was really tough. You know, it took a lot of prayer um, and then it took a lot of action. Right. Um, you know, even before my first game back in 2012, you know, I was really nervous, you know, on the bus ride to um, to the stadium, you know, I was questioning myself, you know, should I play? Should I really, you know, really chance this? Should I really risk this? Or, you know, should I really just go for it? You know, um, take this risk, take this chance and see how far it can take you. And, um, and I went with that. Okay, so you was working out with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when you got the call from Sean Payton telling you to come home. What what made, <laughs> what made you come home? Like, what made you say, okay, I'm about to go here to the Saints instead of seeing if things would have worked out with you from Tampa Bay? Because, you know, they division rivals now. Yeah. And, and, like, what, did you want to go home and, and represent your home team? Well, you know what? It, it uh, No, I, I didn't get medically cleared. Um you know, it, it sucked for me doing that that phase, but it also was good, right? It was bittersweet because I, I didn't get clear from them, but I also got a phone call from, you know, from the 504. So uh, when I when I seen that call, knowing I had Atlanta Falcons next, like that was, it was Tampa, the Saints called, and then I had Atlanta next. So once the Saints found out I was going to work out with Atlanta next day, it was like, hey, we want to fly you in. We want to get you in like immediately before Atlanta and get you to work out. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, so now you see the hunger that Sean, you know, had for you. He wanted to get you in. And um, and then you get signed, and then he comes out in an interview, you know, saying that your workout was the best that he's ever seen. You know, I'm pretty sure you've you seen that. So he was real high on you coming in. So you get started with your first season. You know, you you dominating. Pro Bowl caliber season, and at this time, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, names and stuff, you know, during that time, but, you know, our defense was, you know, our defense wasn't playing well at all during that time. <laughs> so when you, came, when you came in 2015, man, and, and we seen, like, somebody, you know, I say Cam, you know, he was balling out. Um, but when you came in and gave us hope at the cornerback position, you know, we, we was looking forward to that. So once you got into the 2015 season, had a hell of a year, what, what was your thought process? Did you think you could eventually become, you know, a top cornerback in the league and end your career with the Saints? Um, well, you know, I, I was one of the top top cornerbacks coming in, man. <laughs> you know, that's just the confidence I had. You know, I, I knew I was the best coming in, you know, um, no matter who they had lined up in front of me, and no matter who was the top cornerback in the league, I say it was Darrell Revis or, or, or Patrick Peterson and those guys, uh, Richard Sherman, right? So I, I didn't care, man. I, I, I was number one. Um, the mindset you have to have when you are the underdog, right? Um, you, you have to have the mindset. 
Um, and that's what I want to preach to a lot of people. You know, I want to show a lot of people that, you know, no matter where you from, no matter, you know, where you start, um, it, it, you just have to continue to keep grinding and never give up and always continue to keep pushing to the top. Know that you are the best um, in everything you do, uh, whatever goal you're pursuing, know that you are the best, no matter who's in the top position. You are the boss. You are a boss, man. You you have and then you have to back those actions up too, right? You can't just talk it and not back it up. So that, then um, you, you have to cry it yourself in that matter. Um so yeah, man, I, I, I just enjoyed, you know, the whole process and the whole journey of, of getting to the Saints. And um, you know, it's sucked that it was short lived. Um, but during the time uh, coming in two thousand Team. I, I didn't know what the season was going to look like. I just knew it was Super Bowl or nothing, you know, um, in my mind, in my perspective. Um, and playing with, you know, veteran guys like Brandon Browner, um, uh, Kenny Vaccaro was young, uh, Cam Jordan, and those guys, man, and uh, uh, David Hawthorne, and, you know, those guys, man. You know, it, it was great to learn. It was a great experience, um, you know, hearing from those older guys to teach me the game, man. And Keenan, man, that I, I, I want to give help to Keenan Lewis, man. That's like a you know, brother from another, man. Um, you know, he sat down and taught me the ropes, man. He, he taught me how the business from, you know, the, the operations stand, standpoint, not the business side, not the, not, not, excuse me, not the players standpoint, but the business and the operations. As to when you come late, they dock that. How you carry yourself around this treatment, faci treatment facility, around this facility, they dock in that. How you eat, what you eating for lunch, breakfast, dinner. Mind you, now they have coaches that sit in the, and I'm going to say, when you're walking in, like straight, like in the back of the cafeteria, they're paying attention to the way you're sitting, the way you're eating. Like they're paying attention to all that. And it sucks. No, it sucks. You have to be on, on key. You have to be on board. It's something clean. And Lord's definitely, you know, taught me when I went in. And uh, I, I appreciate that. Okay, that's what's so. up. Okay, so you enter year two in the in the first game of 2016 season and you break your fibula. From there, you started another dark road. For your injury-wise, how how did that mentally make you stronger or did it make you feel like, dang, I just can't seem to catch a break? Um, you know what? I wasn't even tripping. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, I finally got to that point in my life and in my career you know, that, you know, things happen for a reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I broke my leg in 2016, um, you know, I was like, all right, cool. You know, it happened. It, it must be for a reason. You know, God has a plan for me. Not thinking that it was on the linger, you know, all the way to 2017, you know, which which yeah. I got departed. But, um, you know, it sucks. But you got to play ball. I mean, you got to take it for what it is. It's a business at the end of the day. You know what you're signing up for. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you just got to, you know, give it your all. Okay. Okay. So, um, like she said, that, that was really like the start to a dark road. And in my view of that, it's not, you know, necessarily you getting hurt is, you know, how the medical staff, you know, at the end of the day, we found out that the medical staff, you know, Miss Don Oskin, you get you out there when you were still hurt. That was the reason why, you know, it was making it apparent to us that you was becoming injury prone, like you couldn't get healthy. You know, so what what was your thoughts? How did that whole situation with the with the medical staff play a part? And how did Keenan yeah. I, I heard you mention Keenan? How did Keenan help you through that phase? Because he experienced that as well, you know, with the medical um, staff. Yeah, man. Um, but I, I just want to give something off the record. Um, Y'all fans, please, 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 please be open-minded to when players get hurt, um, to how much information gets let out. Obviously, when you're seeing players get hurt, how much access do we have to the media to get our side across or to for us to explain our injuries, uh, for us to explain, right? You always hear, you know, medical uh, the team doctors or uh, your head trainers, but you never hear from the player, man. And that's what sucks. So y'all just be open-minded as to when guys get injured and, you know, guys keep getting re-injured and guys can never get help, man. It's, 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 it's a lot that y'all don't know. Um, and we just hope that one day, you know, we can get to the bottom of it to where things could come out to the media to where, you know, it'll give you guys more insight 
No, I'm serious. You know, y'all, because y'all, y'all worry about us. I, I know y'all do. As much as y'all want to sit on the field playing, I know y'all care about, you know, guys being injured, how, how severe injuries, and I know y'all care. But just be open-minded, man. Guys go through things behind closed doors that's really uh, – it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Um, and y'all know from my story. Um, and, yeah, it was, uh, what, 2017, and, and learning from Keenan Lewis, you know, he, he told me – I want to say it was 2016, he was in the treatment room, and he was telling me, he was like, listen to me, bro. Bro, that's what he called me, bro, bro. Listen to me, bro. <laughs> if you're hurt, if you're hurt, tell them people you're hurt, man. Don't don't rush your injuries. Don't don't take it for granted. Don't don't sit up here and linger with it. Don't tell them, hey, oh, I'm hurt, I'm not hurt, I can go, because they're going to look at you as 100%. Yeah. If you're hurt, say you're hurt. And be done with it. But you have to back your work because those doctors, they're very persuasive, you know, and, and, and they tell those coaches things, but you have to protect yourself. Stand, be a man and stand your ground. And I was like, all right, you know, and I'm, as he's telling me this, he's going through it himself. Right? He was getting treatment on his health, and I'm just like, damn, that's never going to happen to me because he's giving me the heads up right now. Man, two years later, look, uh, the next year, look what happened. And I, I, I I'm just like, man, I stood up for myself. That's one thing I learned from I stood up for myself. And, you know, I ended up got kicked off the team or released from me, you know, due to, uh, you know, due to the situations and the arguments and the could have been a fight, you know, between me and Coach Payton. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I knew it ain't because of my play. Uh, I all know it ain't because of my play. Um, God knew it ain't because of my play. Uh, we, we know what it is, and it's behind closed doors that, that – that's the ultimate reason. Okay. That was well said. Um, oh, yeah. So, after going back to the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL and having another dominating year, would you be open to going back to the NFL if, if the opportunity came? Oh, man, I'm putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I just did an interview early this morning. Um, what? Uh, not you know what? I'm just gonna let God handle that for me. Um, you okay. know, I'm I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm tired. I, I didn't think I was gonna, you know, be in this position. You know, in the beginning, you know, if I had known I was gonna be in this position, what ten years ago, eleven years ago, then you know, my answer would be very clear and defined. But now, I'm, you know, I'm I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to spend time with my son. Um. I have one more year left in the CFL. And wherever God take me, you know, um, like I say, I dropped my book. Um, I'm big into this entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial route. I love it. Um, it's very challenging. Um, I'm, I'm working with uh, trying to get my film going. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of off the field uh, opportunities. And I'm going I'm to let uh, the chips fall with it. Are you, okay. open to, are you open to doing something like Ken and Lewis did after? He got done with the NFL. He went to go coach over at Landry Walker in Algiers. Are you open to something like that? Oh, absolutely. But look, I I, I want to go coach back at High School 35, you know, and, and take over uh, uh Coach Wayne Reese, re, uh, rest in peace to Coach Wayne Reese, you know, and go try to win a few championships. But I don't want to stay his thunder. You know, I don't want to stay a king in thunder yet. You dig and let 3-5 come through and go two championships, you know what I mean? I don't want to steal. I don't want to steal my dog thunder. <laughs> okay. Um. Well. Um. I I know you had mentioned Sean. Um. I said you you don't have to get into Pacifics, but um. Like I said, I I was I'm not on here. You know, capping since you on here. Like when you after that 2015 season, I was like, okay, we we got us a, a solid corner. You know that can. A good man up corner. Okay, then the 2016 season happened. Boom. Then you back. Now Marshawn is on the scene. So now I'm looking like, okay, we, we have a one-two punch, you know, that can be deadly in this league. And then, you know, you get released. So back to the situation with Sean, I mean, what – how did it boil to that point? I mean, if you telling them you hurt, was it like he, he wasn't believing what you said that he thought – you was you know capping you know I, I don't know was it did he look at you a certain way like as a leader 
to what he expected you to try to fight through? I mean, what what was the the issue that had him riled up like that? You know, because he should have got to that point. No, oh, hell no, nah, man. No, nah, that shit shouldn't have got to that point, man. It was, um, you know, it was, it was, it, it, it became, what do I say? It became um, the who had the bigger chest, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he, it got to the point like the doctor's telling him one thing, you know, and believing what the doctor said, obviously, just because, you know, it's his doctors, man. They, they've been with him for a certain amount of years. He know them to the T. That's his guys. Okay, but also I know me. You know, I know my body. My body, you know, it, I've been through a lot. You know, I've broken my neck. I've broken my thumb. I've, I've I've broken my leg before, so I know exactly the type of pain that you know it it, it is. I know the exact pain. I know what it feels like. And uh, we'll go in treatment rooms, man. He will come in the treatment room like one specific time. You know, I'm sitting up there getting treatment, trying to come back, bro. That's the crazy fucking thing is. I'm trying to come back and, you know, I, I want to play on time. I'm trying to practice. I'm trying to get out there. You know, I know they got young Marshall, Lattimore, PJ, where everybody competing. I want to be out there competing too. And he come in, a, in in the treatment room and, you know, it's like, well, when's he going to be ready? Like, we, like me and my mind, I'm like, like, we're, like, who is he? Like, what you mean he? Like, like I ain't got a name or something. That, like, I, like, it's, it was crazy, man. And my teammates was, you know, was sitting up there like, bro, you all right? Why does he keep coming at you like that? And I'm like, man, I don't fucking know. I really don't fucking know why this man coming at me like that, dog. And they're like, you all right? I'm like, fuck no, I ain't all right. Would you be all right to have some fucking body that, you know, it's not know somebody, your head coach that come in, you know, hound you 24-7 when you know something is wrong with your body, but you can't really do nothing because you know, their doctors are right. He's like, what you want me to do? Ease down, bro. I, bro I, I was fucking crying. Excuse me. Like, I was crying, you know, uh, uh, some days going back home just because I didn't know where this was all going to lead to. You know, I, I got to wake up the next day hearing, hearing, them, hearing the head coach mouth like, oh, like, come on, bro. Like, this ain't, this ain't work. This ain't, it, it, it became unfun to me, man. I, I, I didn't, I didn't really like it no more because just the treatment, dog. Then we get in meetings and stuff like that in in private meetings, and you know it. It's like, okay, who is the bigger man now? I'm gonna tell you, this is what we are saying. F what you're saying. This is what we are saying. But I'm, I'm, in me, I'm saying this is what I'm saying, and he didn't like that. So they're saying it, and I'm like, well, I'm saying this too. So it, he didn't like that, and you know, it, 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 it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So after, I mean, after all of that played out, like he he didn't reach out to you and be like, my my bad. I'm talking about with the medical staff. I know you probably don't want to get too too much specifics with them, but like after that, like he didn't at least reach out to you and be like, yeah, my my bad, man. You know, you know it was you know mis misinformation coming. It, it wasn't no type of you know text or call from him about. About that, it, it was just a release, and that's it. Cause that's that's messed up. Man, listen to me, man. Um, I want to say we had a meeting right like, right after. Uh, that's crazy. Right after my doctor, uh, I went to my pain once he came back with the results saying that my leg was broken. Mm -hmm. He called this meeting, man, at the Hilton Hotel. He called this meeting where everybody came. In. It was a team meeting. Everybody came. In. He started telling us, "Hey, we fired two doctors." Uh, you know, unfortunately, y'all know the situation has happened. He started telling us a story about 2019 and, uh, and the adversity that they went through. Oh, I don't want to hear that bullshit, man. I'm sitting up there in the front row like, this my apology? So after after they, uh, after they he got done, uh, Drew Brees and them, you know, they were like, hey, everybody stay back. So we all stood in the meeting. The coaches got out just a little players. It was like a little quick two-minute meeting, meet, one-minute meet, whatever. There was like, Bro, that's not your apology. Don't accept that, man. Don't accept that. That is not your apology. If that's some apology, that's bullshit. Don't accept it. We had your back all along. We knew you wasn't bullshit. We knew you were right this whole time. I'm like, man, well, why, why the hell you came to me telling me, oh, my team is, you know, my teammates is starting to lose hope in me. My teammates is starting to lose faith in me. Why he come tell me that then? Like, it was just a whole to say, but y'all never heard once from me because why? Why, dog? That's and that's why. 
Like, that's why I kept it to myself for so, you know, for the next two years, because I'm like, if they didn't want me, if, if they really wanted me to come out and tell truth, I would expose, expose something back there. I would have done some damage back there. And I, I know they didn't want that to happen. So that's why they got rid of me rather than me be there and shit. You feel know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. So I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I was weird. It's crazy. But uh, I forgave the situation. You know, I, I forgave Coach Payton. That's why I'm still a Saints fan with that. Um, all the way. Um, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a Sean Payton fan. I am, you know, I am definitely a who that fan. Just, you know, a Sean Payton fan. I'm, I'm, I'm nah. He he would understand that too. He he would understand that. I would understand that. Yeah, y'all don't understand that because y'all wasn't in the situation, which is crazy. Because it was heated. Like it was some it was on some crazy shit. Like if you read my book, like my book, it details it. Y'all go get the book; it details everything. It, it talks we got about the all. Book. We yeah. made it on the book. We oh. thought the book was going to come in time before the interview. Mess with Amazon because of everything with COVID. That we're assuming, but we got the book. It, it's not going to be delivered until later today. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. It's uh, I ain't going to say too much, like, yeah. uh, but that was just a little. You know, synopsis of what what it is. Um, but you know, it, it's my book is pretty awesome. Um, I'm glad y'all getting it. It talks about you know from when I was this age, you know, and how you know seeing abuse and seeing you know uh, my father, you know, uh, treat you know my mom like I, I, as a as a, as a kid. Look at it's all good. No, I want it. This is so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, put the shots on. Put them on. Put the shots on. Put the shots on. Sorry about that. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, put the shots on. It was, put the shots on. It was, uh, Dude, it was uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so you know, just seeing you know, bro, stop seeing seeing uh, abuse and stuff at that age, you know, that's just what I thought. I, I, I thought that was the norm, you know, I thought that was what you know, kids supposed to see, and um, and, and me sharing that in my story and in my book. I think it's awesome for, for, for other family and, and, and adults to read too because it's not right, you know, that tug love and that, you know, uh, what happens behind closed doors stays behind closed doors, but you're not understanding. You, you're mentally, mentally damaging your kids. Psychologically, you're really harming us kids mentally. And and that what took a toll. Like I said, I, I wanted to commit suicide at nine years old with my dad's gun. Um, and and he, like I said, he didn't know just the frustration that I was going through and the pain that I was going through. Um, and, and, you know, it was just as young as that age that's wanting to commit suicide. So, you know, I talk about all that and I talk about my neck injury. Um, yeah. I talk about my neck injury. Um, I talk about um, uh, my journey from, you know, the depression stage on my college. And then I also ended up talking about how I made it from uh, the Gridiron Development Gridiron Developmental League all the way up to the uh, CFL. Well, I can't wait to read it because I feel like I feel like I will relate to your book so much, specifically because again, I'm from New Orleans. I'm from the Night War. Cross okay, Canada. okay. Thank Claude. Yeah. Canada. I'm right there. <laughs> um, so I just I feel I'm 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 so excited because I know that you're going to say something in this book that I can relate to. Because I probably experienced the same thing. But going mm -hmm. off of what you said earlier, we know that you still rapping the who that the black and gold. How do you feel about the squad we have right now? You know what? I'm actually liking what they're doing. You know, of course the record is uh is 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 looking good, but we have to continue to keep going. Um Taysom, yes. we got to make sure Taysom protect the pill. Now we got he gotta he gotta hold the ball, gotta protect the pill. Um you know, other than that, he's still doing well. You know, his numbers aren't bad. You know, he's he's you know his numbers aren't bad um, in the air. Um, but that's the biggest thing in defense. We need you. We need the defense yeah. now. We need the yeah. defense because right now is the most pivotal stretch oh, to yeah. where the defense has to show: Are we capable of winning the championship? Are yeah. we? Are we just going? Are we going to continue to keep doing what the hell we've been doing for the last couple of years? And I'm tired of seeing that bullshit. <laughs> aren't we all? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. 
I'm tired. Right. So, um, but no, they're looking well. Um, like I said, I don't, you know, the Twitter fans, I, my social media fans, I love y'all to death. Um, I highly doubt uh, who that nation, um, how the Saints want me back in that uniform again. Um, but I would love it. Yeah, I'm a fan now. I'm a big fan now. I know y'all want to see 40 back out there, but I'm a fan now. Um, so I'm going to treat the game as such and leave it at that. Stop, man. Okay. Well, you would, would you, you would you make a cameo and now you want to make a cameo? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're the DB and you knowing how um how the Chiefs how explosive their offense is, do would you rather see them in in a lot of man looks or more cover three type look, trying to keep everything in front of them? No, I wouldn't even see cover three type looks. I, I want to see cover four, man. I know what beats Kansas City. I know what beats speed, man. I would I would love to see them um uh run cover four uh defense. I know Dennis Allen playbook too, so I'm not gonna tell y'all anything. Um but I I I, I hope he runs uh, look, I hope I hope he runs uh his co- his cover six. Um I I'm not gonna tell y'all the exact call, but I hope he runs his cover six uh <laughs> Defense um, against um, Kansas City, man. And man to man, I want to go in the man. Man, I see Sean up there talking. I see Tyreek over there. And look, I want to see man to man. I want to see the boys line it up. I'm, I, man, look, it's time. I, it's time. <laughs> Two of the best. In the look, to, look, and I don't want no safety over the top. I don't want to see no safety over the top. I want to see strap for strap, man up, mano y mano. I want to do that. You don't think Tyreek too fast for him? No, do you know? Mind you, not Sean ran Y'all got to remember he's Sean ran the four three. They ready. He's he's they ready. ready. He just got hey, I, I, he's they ready. Yeah, I got money on my dog. I got money on Sean. All day. As you should. But let me ask you this: What if it don't even? What if it doesn't even come down to that? Because we know Patrick Mahomes like to throw interceptions, but also we also know how dominant Cam Jordan. Marcus Davenport, Trey Henderson, how how fast those guys can get off the line. What if it never even gets to him to throw to Tyreek Hill for us to see that that matchup in its entirety? Well, you know what? The guys have to play uh, balance front. Right? Uh, they have to blitz uh, balancely, right? Their front line have to work together. You know, the stunts have to be, like, perform perfectly. Yeah, they they their their stunts have to be performed perfectly uh this weekend um because you can't really give a lane to Patrick Mahomes. If you give him a lane, he can step up in the A gap, B gap, and make those throws. So if we if we contain him at the quarterback spot, which is I want to say is what the six point what six yard line, what the quarterback sack is the six point six yard line from the center. Y'all y'all need to know that. Uh, it's a QB pocket. Um, and if he continue to Say, bro. <laughs> and if we continue to rush up front, man, well, I think we're going to do well um, uh, against Pat Mahomes. Just keep him in the pocket. Don't let him scramble out and make throws. And yeah. I-, I think we're wonderful with that. Stop. Stop. I feel like if we get enough pressure on him, once he get out of the pocket and make him throw uncomfortable throws, then we will definitely get a few interceptions. But we would have to actually capitalize off of them and don't let it go through our fingers. Because Patrick, Patrick is, really, is, is really good for my exceptions. And I just hope our guys back there can actually grab one of them things from him. Get them off oh, the absolutely. a little bit. Hey, you got Marcus Williams snagging picks. Hey, I, I, don't be surprised if you see one this week. I, I definitely would not, especially with how vertical he is and the length that he has. He can definitely go up there and get it. Yes, sir. Well, what what you what you been up to doing this COVID? Um, we we know you released a book, um, mm-hmm. and I, I see a clothing line you had you have going on, bro show. Bro show. Oh, so absolutely. What, what business venues that you that you getting involved with now that um, you know, COVID going on. I'm doing my interview right now. Um. Uh, so I've been just spending time with my son, as y'all can see. Uh, it's it's been happening. I've been. Uh, <laughs> Traveling back and forth to Canada, um, you know, and I come home and see my son and, and you know, and I head back out and I, I you know, I just been taking it all in. You know, COVID really has shown me that I, I really need God. You know, I, I really, really need him more than um, than ever. 
So um, I, I'm very thankful that COVID has, has hit and it's also shown me uh, a, a lot of lessons, right? Um, you know, with son and, and things that we're learning for his growth in next year, right? Like we're starting to put, get him ready for karate and, and jujitsu and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just, just mainly, you know, just focusing on him. You know, I don't, I don't really do too much. I don't really go out. Um, you know, I don't really party too much unless it's, you know, with my brother's name or you know, something at the house. Um, and as far as entrepreneurship, you know, um, I'm really getting into this uh, THC and CBD business. Um, I'm really a big advocate in that. I, I did not know how much it really works. Uh, um, you know, like I say, I was a, a big um, dare guy. I don't know if y'all had dare. Um, Carly, you probably know dare, D-A-R-E, the, yes. the dare program. So I, hey, well, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was a big advocate with that until I, you know, got to Canada and started playing and, you know, and a teammate were, was smoking uh, the cannabis and stuff like that. And, you know, it it helped their bodies. And it was one day I was asking them, I say, how does it really make y'all feel? And it was like, you should try it. So I tried it and I'm like, man, this should really be legal. This, this man, I, it's medicine. It's, um, you know, um, <laughs> it's very medicinal. Uh, and said, I went to each state and I have been licenses, uh, you know, to make sure I'm legally, uh, medically legally. Um, that's how involved I'm in now. Um, I've gone to uh, California to take um, classes and stuff like that to to get all my grow license and stuff like that. To you know, one day I can get my own um, business and everything growing uh, with uh, with the CBD and the TAC industry. Uh, other than that, you know, coaching, trying to get involved in coaching, doing public speaking, um, and just doing little things. I just enjoy my life. I don't stress, and I tweet a lot too. So <laughs> it be me on that tweeting. So, speaking of tweeting a lot, how do you feel when you see Saints players club back at the fans because the fans are upset that they didn't play well? Or <laughs> Let me tell you, Elvin Kamara had him a. Film. Uh, people i'm i'm just i'm just saying even andrews people's uh, when i told him he's blocking the wrong people <laughs> <laughs> no that's funny uh no it's, it's actually hilarious um you know I, I want y'all fans to know we really like look at y'all tweets we really look at the dms we if you know we just don't reply if it don't if you know just because i don't know um but no, it's it's crazy. But I think it's cool, you know, um, that you fans get any type of uh, response out of, you know, what they say, quote unquote, famous people. Um, yeah. I, I don't look at us look at us as famous. It's just we have TV time, right? We just have more TV time than Carly than UCB. Like we just have TV time. But uh, if we didn't have TV time, who would we be? Think about it. Yeah. If our faces were not, who would we be? We'd just be normal people. So the fact that we are, you know, you get an interaction or response from, you know, famous people, man, I, I think it's cool. I know, I know the NBA, the NBA, um, they finally, well, I'm not, they didn't legalize, but they're not testing for marijuana. Do you think that's going to start a trend and work its way around all of the sports? All of the sports um, leagues. Wow. Well, you know the NFL. The NFL. Yeah, the NFL. They don't do it in the NFL now. So, uh, you know, I, I know those guys are happy. You know, I talk to those guys 24-7, man. So they, uh, they're happy that that uh, has been kicked out. Um, but but I think it needs to be, um, you know, legalized around every sport every uh, in the world. I just think it just needs to be legalized all over. Um, because you still can, you know, maneuver, you still can operate, you still can go get jobs. You know, you even have guys that prove it. You know, you have like the Wiz Khalifas and, 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 and your uh, Harringtons and you know, all your top guys, all your rappers and stuff. Look, look at all the rappers, you know, come on, man. It's like they go put out all this good music and, you know, well, some of it um, be, you know, some good music. But <laughs> but you think, you know, so so it's just how you use it. Right. It's, it's, it's how you yeah. use it. And uh, I think it will be very beneficial to to the world. If, you know, he's gonna bring so much money into so. So going off of the kind of NBA NFL thing, 
Now that we've seen how successful it was for the NBA to put their players in a bubble and the NFL saying that they have no interest of doing that, do you think they should consider it since we're going into the play? Once we get into the playoffs, since the teams will be definitely narrowed down and there won't be as many players to to put in the bubble? Or do you think that they should just let them continue the quarantine at their house or hotels? Uh, I, th I think they should do um, I think they should do the hotels, um, you know, for the playoffs, you know, because think about it, a certain amount of teams playing, you know, they have enough hotels to fit the, you know, those amount of teams um, and then it'll be safe. Right. We don't need nobody on no damn injury report for no COVID or no playoff. I'm not hearing it. I'm not buying it. I don't want to hear right. that. Oh, he got COVID the day before. I don't want to hear that, man. No. Yeah. Have, so, have you ever I, watched I, the game? Have you ever watched the game and just got so, you got to the point where you just be like, man, I wish I could have been in there and helped them or jumped in the TV and said, dang, I should have been right there. Have you ever like watched the game and imagine yourself being in that game? Of course. Who wouldn't? You know, what former athlete wouldn't? What former player wouldn't? You know, I always just, you know, and I always put myself and be like, okay, what what would I have done differently? Would I have played it like them or would I have played it different? Because think about it. When you're in that moment, you're playing in that moment. You're not thinking about nothing else. You're playing in that moment. Whatever you decide to make, whatever move you decide to make, it's just in that moment. I mean, you can't get that back, right? So I just try to always analyze and visualize myself making the right play, the perfect play, and always envision myself making the wrong play. What would I have done? You know, different. So, you know. I've, I've always heard that cornerback or these is literally the hardest position to play in the NFL. What makes that position so hard? Is is the hardest position ever in 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 football? Period. Not just in NFL. It, it's hard because we're going backwards. We're like, we're like mm -hmm. offense alignment. If you think, you know, we have the same mechanics, right? You know, we have to jam, right? If yeah. defense line come at offense, they got to sit there, sit back, jam. You know, it's basically the same thing. But it's we're doing everything going backwards. Y'all tell me, if I'm running a four three, you know, playing backwards, and this guy running a four three, running false, who's faster? Yeah, you he, tell he, me. He, he he supposed to have the advantage. He's supposed to. Exactly. So you having a guy that can keep up, you know, going backwards with a guy that's going forward. You tell me, man. Look, right. get up, man. That's I, true. I, I asked that question because there was a coach from Southern University who was doing recruiting and said that he recruited. While he was recruiting, he asked one of the guys, "What position did he play?" And the guy told him he played a wide receiver, and he wanted to switch that guy to the guy was like, no, he wouldn't do it. And he told that that coach told that guy, you should try switching to cornerback because that is the one position that everybody's looking for because nobody wants to play it. Mm -hmm. Every coach is looking mm -hmm. for particular. And he was saying how hard it was, and I'm just like, is it hard? How hard so everyone kept saying that it's literally the hardest to Yeah, then you it is. I, I mean, I don't want to be biased just because I played a position, but I, I just think it is. Um, besides the quarterback position, right? The quarterback position is probably one of, if not the toughest, and the kicker, right? You know, them three positions to me are the top, um, you know, that I think are, are probably the hardest, you know, because first of all, DB is. It's hard to learn, you know. You you have to learn how to have a stance. You have if you can't even get in a stance, you can't play the game. You, you, if you don't have confidence, you can't play the game. If you scared to get beat, you can't get. You don't need to be playing cornerback. You know what? Because I remember Marshawn Lattimore once said that even though he plays cornerback, he used to always watch Tyron highlights of Tyron Matthew because although Tyron played the safety position. He had a good stance with him that he thought he could use at the CB position. Mm hmm Yeah, that man. Look, Tyron is a is a great uh, guy to watch film. Um, uh, if you want to learn how to play the game and, and play the DB position, because uh, he he does it really well. You know, he, he plays the nickel really well. He plays the safety. He plays the corner really well. Uh, he just does it, and he takes the ball away. Um, you know what's crazy? Is I even watched Tyron Matthew highlights playing. Um, you know, starting when I was playing flag football, 
all the way up until uh, I want to say this past year. Shoot, I, I watch it now, you know, just randomly. Um, and and just watching his playmaking ability and watching him take away the ball, watching him get to the ball, not just get to the ball, but have intentions when he gets to the ball carry. He ain't just going there, I'm gonna make a tackle. He's trying to go in there, punch the ball out, rip the yeah. ball out, he's trying to do something to take the ball away. And I think that's just that's 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 awesome. Right. Do you, do, you there, do you think there's going to be an upset in this, in this week coming up? Like, do you think that the Panthers are going to beat the um, the Packers today to help us kind of get that number one seed back and we can beat Kansas City? You see it happening? Uh, who, who Carolina got this week? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. And they play today. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, um, well you know right. what? what I, yeah, well, yeah, that's gonna be tough. But the Saints you need to win out. <laughs> yeah. Just win, you yeah. know. Oh, that's yeah. like I said. I don't never play into the numbers game. Well, I don't well, know. Well, I don't control, care. Just control, win. Right? control what? Control the W. With with what? Uh, 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 with number two said, control of W, man. We gotta control them, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, Delvin, man. Well, we can we can end this off with um, what what words of encouragement do you have for people that's going through hardship? I mean, because I mean, even before the book, I know the book is going to give even more, you know, encouraging details, you know, some tragedy events that you went through. Um, so what can you tell the ones that's going through, going through the mud? Um, they feel hopeless. You know, like you said, you want to commit suicide. Guys is going through situations like that. What kind of advice do you have for them? You know what? Just just keep your head up. Um, just always know. You know, uh, there's always a light at the end of the at the end of the road. Um, it's something. Um, you know, I, I was playing in Canada, and uh, my coach showed us a video of a guy named Richard uh, Makowitz. And uh, he was talking to he's a Navy SEAL and uh, he was talking to the Oakland Raiders. And, uh, you know, he went out there, done a little seminar. He was talk. And what I got out of that was not dead, can't quit. Um, that was uh, oh, wow. something that really stuck out to me. Um, and and it's no matter what you're going through, no matter how much adversity gets in your way, no matter what your boss tell you, no matter how much your mom aggravates you, if you're not dead, you can't quit. Simple. You can't quit. You have to continue to keep going because you have a lot of people that's looking up to you. Um, whether you, you know, you're in high school, whether you're in middle school, you, if you're in middle school, you have your younger siblings looking up to you. So you always have somebody that's looking up to you. So you have to set the standard. Make sure that standard is excellence and legendary. So always remember, not dead, can't quit. Okay. Well, well, Delvin, man, we definitely, um, once again, man, it was definitely an honor to have you come on, fam. Like I said, this is this is our first, you know, big time interview that we've had. We, um, you know, we started as a podcast. We started, we lived over a year, so we, um, you know, we working our way up, man. And just reading this book, this just gives, you know, me motivation to, you know, hamper down on, you know, the podcast and and other things that I have going, you know, in my life. So. You know, even if a person don't go through the mud, you can still get encouraged by other people's situation. Just the grind that somebody is putting into, you know, something that they want to do. So, um, Carla, you have any final words for Delvin? Thank you for coming on our podcast and giving us a chance. Man, we appreciate it so much. I love you. I'm a fan. You know, I'm from the city just like you are. So you inspire me a lot to see everything that you've overcome and i can't wait to read this book man i'm i, I, I i'm excited <laughs> wait thank you i all appreciate right. it all right fam you have a good all one right, th all right thank you all all right all right miss carly that was a success wasn't Woo! it <laughs> man i'm excited man um Shout out to everybody that, that was tuned in. I'm I'm apologize I didn't get to the comments, but um I'm happy you know, we I, I'm happy we did it. 
Yeah, we did it. And Wait, I'm sorry I didn't put the comments up, but I was, um, you know, just trying to listen and, you know, learn, you know, what, what he had to tell us. But uh, I hope you guys like this. It was amazing. And we're going to try to, you know, start having, you know, people come on for interviews. So once it was, again. It was so fun. Yes, definitely. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, and. We can leave off on this. Um, go cop Devon books. Devon Bro's new book is called Unbroken. Unbroken. Amazon. Right at twenty dollars. So it's, it's you know not too expensive. So just go cop it and, and read and you know learn more about you know his his story. I see Cornelia said, What was the book again? It's called Unbroken. Unbroken. Look for it on Amazon. Right. All right, who that nation? Well, y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys for the post game show tomorrow. This is the WDN Chat Line Podcast, and we out. Who that? Who that?